Here we are, clan the isms, cataclysm, great. Our people out here struggling, trying to make it in this state. Everybody out here doing it, but we the ones who late. Now family, we the ones who gotta delegate. Get that money in the power, never be fake. Stick to co side for three. What did he say? Uh, create jobs, support our own. Educate the same and buy back your home. Got three degrees, triple ten. Three PhDs, now we on the CNN. DBTV, let's talk about negligence. Ignorance is bliss, but we can turn into intelligence. Believe none of what you hear, half of what you see. Let's break it down here on Dr. Boyce TV. Here we are. And uh, I want to welcome everybody to DrBoyceTV.com, the home for intelligent black people. So if you're black and intelligent, then you are home. If you're not black and intelligent, this is not the place for you. So uh, anyway, I wanted to ask uh, everybody, uh, first of all, as you come in, uh, please shout out your city, shout out uh, uh, what your business, uh, if you have a black owned business, everybody should be a business owner or trying to be. Uh, and also uh, please greet Dr. Claude Anderson uh, when you come in. Uh, Dr. Claude Anderson is the author of the books, Powernomics, Black Labor, White Wealth, The Black History Reader, and Dirty Little Secrets 1 and 2. And uh, I want to ask you guys, uh, uh, as you greet Dr. Anderson, I want to ask Dr. Anderson himself, how you doing today, sir? Oh, I'm, I'm black and proud. Ah, okay. Say it loud. All right. <laughs> so, so, so let, let me ask you this, Dr. Anderson. Uh, we last night on Black Movie Night, because I, uh, I, I don't know if I told you about Black Movie Night. Yeah, you we're did. Build, uh, we're, we're, yeah, we're building a film industry. We're, we're we're really doing it, getting it done. Hundreds of thousands of people are supporting it. Uh, you know, we, we we're raising money, all these things. Uh, and last night, what we did was instead of 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 just showing a movie, uh, what well, instead? Sorry, give me a second. Let me turn this off. Okay, instead of instead of uh, seeing a movie. We, we watched uh, Malcolm X's speech, The Ballad or the Bullet. And, uh -huh. uh, and I felt like that would be an important thing to do to educate ourselves in the community because we, we're taking over black education. You know, this is during this okay. pandemic, everybody's got the kids at home. So I've been telling everybody, uh, take over the education of your kids. I want to be a part of it. I want to help you educate your family. So they come in for educational reasons. So I said, the first piece of education we need to get is from people like yourself. And also uh, we watched The Ballad of the Bullet speech uh, where uh, Malcolm X talked about a lot of things you don't really hear about anymore, where he actually was saying that he, he didn't, he trusts the Democrats less than he even trusted the Republicans. Uh, and he also talked about black folks not getting nothing for their vote and what it means to take control of your communities. And the, a lot of the things that you talk about. So I'd like to get your, your take on that. You know, you, uh, were, were very present during the era of Malcolm X and, and, uh, when he gave the ballot of the bullet speech and everything else, what, what is your take on this, you know, just as an expert in terms of what Malcolm was saying and, and the messages of that time? Well, I, um, <laughs> good. Malcolm was right on point, dead on point. And that's why I had so much respect for him during the 1960s at that point, point in time, because we had a choice between Malcolm on the right and Martin Luther King on the left. And what most people don't know, especially the younger people, that, that, that Malcolm was much more receptive uh, to, 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 to the air of doing something specifically and solely for black folk than Martin was. Martin was off into universality. He wasn't that concerned. He was talking all this mumble jumble about let's, let's be concerned about all people. And that's why I talked about this on your previous show and I talked about, as I said, about the, uh, the four horses of the apocalypse. Malcolm was the uh, first horse, the white horse that came in <clears throat> and which signified a spirit of, of religious indoctrination. And so he was speaking more from a biblical standpoint and we were very proud of him because he was, had a lot of backbone and balls and trying to help black folk, uh, but only incidentally, because he wanted, his, he, he wanted to spread everything and uh, by including everybody, inclusivity, including everybody and anything. Malcolm wasn't. Malcolm was pretty much concerned about doing something for black folk. And that's why I respected Malcolm. And that's why most of the indoctrination, even though I must confess, he put out a book, but I never read his book. And... Uh, as I said, only came to Detroit, Michigan in 1963. And then it was, and at the same time that I was raising Cain about the fact that Detroit, that um, for the first time, blacks had become the majority population in Detroit, Michigan. That was the first time they'd become a majority population. And, but most of the whites were moving out of Detroit into the suburbs and uh, under urban renewal. And they were vacating the city and just dropping it. But when they vacated, they had trapped practicing <clears throat> the principle of scorched earth, which means we're going to leave Detroit, but we're going to take everything with us, destroy everything that we can't take out of the city and build a new thing called suburbs. So no such thing as suburbs at that point in time when Malcolm was coming there. We're no, we didn't have any suburbs. 
suburbs were just beginning. It was an idea of white folks' mind. And what whites wanted to do <clears throat> was extract everything out of the city of Detroit and move it to the to a cross eight mile road. The eight mile road was the limit of the city. And the, before that, all this everybody was confined to be, between the river and the eight mile road. And they were moving, building suburbs. They would move the businesses, the the industries, the factories, the jobs, the employment, the wealth, the voting power, everything into the suburbs, and strip the city down to nothing. <clears throat> but at the same time. Malcolm was, was there. Martin Luther was playing this march in Detroit, Michigan, to, to march from uh, from from Jefferson uh, Boulevard uh, all the way down to Woodward until uh, Wayne State University's campus. And uh, and the funny thing about that is that the press was very concerned about that because he was because Malcolm Malcolm was saying, "Let's take Detroit and build Detroit and do something for black folk." And uh, Martin was talking about. Um, you know, uh, integration, and at that time, and so when we could, so when sort of press went to went to went to Martin, asked him, so what do you think about this march that uh, Martin Luther King is planning coming down with, with to uh, to Wayne State University, and uh, and 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 uh, what do you think about that idea? Is that a good idea? Or what 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 do you think of it? And they asked Malcolm. Malcolm says, what march? It, it, so if you don't know about the march, you know what march. They said, well, uh, uh, Martin Luther King's going to march down, down Woodward from Jefferson Beach, Jefferson Avenue all the way down to Wayne State University and march because he wants to he wants to go out and integrate the suburbs. But when whites move to the suburbs, Malcolm wants, but blacks also be able to go to the suburbs. And so Malcolm says, well, that, that's not a march. But people say, yes, it is a march. So March with Martin Luther King and his all his followers coming down Woodward. So Martin, so Malcolm says that's not a march, that's a parade. And uh, and saying like any good parade, you got a bunch of clowns out front leading it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so so at that point, at that point, I said that's my man, that's my man. Malcolm will be my be my man. Malcolm Malcolm summarized a lot of my thinking at that time, because I wanted blacks to have their own city. At that point in time, if 51% of the population, Blacks could have taken over the whole city. The problem that they had, why Detroit failed, was that was that white folk killed the city by stripping it of all the resources and, and hauling all the resources to the suburbs and then taking the power to, to, the, to Lansing, to the state capital, to make sure that any time black folk wanted to do anything inside Detroit, with, uh, that they needed uh, political power to do it, they would deny it. And that's what kept Detroit down from the from the 1960s up until until uh, now. A white man Dugan has taken it over again, and now it's back in the hands of whites, because uh, black they said well black folk destroyed the city. No, the black folk didn't destroy the city. Whites destroyed the city when they moved to the suburbs and took all the resources out, and so black folk could not do anything because whites in the suburbs were still controlling Detroit. And Malcolm has said before, you know, try to you know, try to hold and control all the land and resources you could. So I respected Malcolm for that. Here we are, clan, the isms, cataclysm, great. Our people out here struggling, trying to make it in this state. Everybody out here doing it, but we the ones who late. Now, family, we the ones who gotta delegate. Get that money in the power, never be fake. Stick to co sign for three. What did he say? Uh, create jobs, support our own. Educate the same and buy back your home. Got three degrees, triple ten, three PhDs. Now we on the CNN, DBTV. Let's talk about negligence. Ignorance is bliss, but we can turn it to intelligence. Believe none of what you hear, half of what you see. Let's break it down here on Dr. Boy's TV. Here we are.